Hello and welcome to the Widow's Oil. This video is a continuation of my previous video, which is called The Three Great Deceptions of the Church. I will link this video in the description box below in case you would like to go and watch that. Now, this video is a short discussion um, just to point out that in these three great deceptions, there is a common denominator. Basically, these three deceptions are one and the same if you really think about it. Now, what I said in this video is that um, what I saw is that like um, the Pastor Chuck Baldwin preached, there were three uh, great deceptions that we've seen in the um, time since Jesus Christ uh, came to the earth and Christianity came to us. And those were first the Judaizers, um, th those of the Pharisees who um, wanted the believers to turn back to works of the law. And then we had the Roman Catholicism, um, I'm basically speaking of the Western Church now. I do not um, understand or know the uh, tradition of the Eastern Church, though I would say they probably have the same type of problems as what we saw in the Roman Catholic Church. But uh, we in the West uh, know the history of the Roman Catholic Church. And then in modern times and in our day, we are having a big struggle against Christian Zionism um, in the church. But I want to point out that in all three of these, we have two factors at play, and it's always like that. And if we can recognize that, then we, it's much easier for us to recognize heresies and false teachings and false prophets, because in these three major deceptions, I see two factors at play, and I will show you the scriptures after just giving you a summary of it. The first factor is that they always take you back to the law. The Judaizers did that. Roman Catholicism was all about works, and Christian Zionism is also proving in our day more and more to show that its real colors is about taking you back to the law. Um, so that's the first factor, is works of the law, they take you back to that. A false prophet will take you back to a righteousness of his own making and not the righteousness of the Lord, which is um, given to us by grace through faith. The second factor that these three deceptions have in common is they all seek an earthly kingdom. In the first century, those of the, um, of the Israelites that believed in, in the Messiah still kept wanting an earthly kingdom. They didn't understand that what Christ brought is a heavenly kingdom, which is far greater they, they were blind to that and they thought it was going to be an earthly kingdom for their nation. Now, in the Roman Catholic system, we saw it was not about one nation, but it was a um, sort of a earthly um, spiritual system, but it ended up oppressing men and again making it about earthly throne and, and earthly oppression and men lording it over other men. So they also ended up seeking a, a um, earthly kingdom, even though they may have started seeking a heavenly kingdom because of carnality and uh, deception and false prophets and that they ended up again seeking an earthly kingdom. And likewise, in Christian Zionism, it's all about the earthly kingdom. It, it started with this um, Israel in, in, uh, in the Middle East in 1948 in creating a physical state of Israel. 
And to this day, it is about that, about an earthly is Israel and the earthly kingdom on earth. So you will always see that. That will help you see um, these three great deceptions and it will hopefully also help you if you meet up with false prophets um, to recognize this that they um, also tend to make their own little kingdom, even if it's their own little uh, cult, it's their own little kingdom on earth. So it seems to be a pattern that uh, is that that manifests itself because of this spirit of disobedience uh, and rebellion. Now, um, I'm just going to share a few scriptures regarding these two aspects. Firstly, let's look at the aspect of the kingdom of God, um, which Jesus clearly said was a spiritual kingdom that he came to set up. Um, we know many of these scriptures, but it's good to just um, be thorough in what I say and just um, bring up these scriptures that prove these things. Firstly, the very well-known scripture where Jesus said in John 18, verse 36, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. So Jesus came to set up a spiritual kingdom, which is the new Jerusalem. Then he also told us it is spiritual, um, that it would come in a spiritual way. Jesus said in Luke 17, he said uh, in verse 20, starting in verse 20 and verse 21, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50, Paul says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. So we cannot inherit the kingdom of God by making a earthly kingdom of God. It has got to be a spiritual kingdom and then the spiritual kingdom will manifest on earth. In Hebrews 11 we also learn about the fact that all the faithful were not um, waiting for a earthly kingdom but in fact waiting for a heavenly kingdom. Let's first read Hebrews 11, verse 8 to 10. It says, By faith Abram obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance, and he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith he dwelt in the land of promise, as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise, for he waited for the city, which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. That This city that Abram was waiting for is, of course, the new Jerusalem, which we read of in uh, Revelation 21. Now let's read Hebrews 11 from verse 13 to 16. It says, these all died in faith. Now it's speaking in Hebrews 11 as you probably know of all the um, believers before Jesus Christ um, who looked forward to the promise of the Messiah. So they all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland, and truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. 
but now they desire a better that is a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. So we see clearly in Hebrews 11 that it was never about a earthly country or nation, and it was never about an earthly kingdom. It was always about the spiritual Jerusalem, which has been, was prepared for them. Now, let us look at the second aspect, and that is the aspect of um, the law, that uh, the deceptions also involve um, a rejection of the new covenant and turning back to works of the law and a righteousness of our own. And by that, we reject Jesus Christ. It is very sad that so many people who, who say and name the name of Jesus do not realize that by, um, by returning to works of the law, they actually deny Jesus Christ and they reject the new covenant. So that is a very important thing to know. It really helps us avoid deception. So we read there um, in 2 Corinthians 3, Paul tells us of this new covenant. He, he speaks of the apostles um, himself, Peter, James, John, etc., as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. So we see that it, it's all about the new covenant, which brings us to life. And Jesus said the same thing in John 6, verse 63. Jesus says the following. It is the spirit who gives life, the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. So it is the spirit, the words of the Jesus, the word that he spoke to us can raise us up to life. Works of the flesh will not do that. Now, yeah, in Galatians 5 verse 2, Paul says exactly the same thing. He says, Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. So you see there, Jesus said his words, the spirit gives life. And if you try to be perfected by yourself, it will not work. And that is why Paul was telling them, those who had those uh, people from the pagan nations, that had turned to Christ and then they wanted to turn back to the law. He said it will profit nothing because works of the law um, do not, we are not in the old covenant anymore. We are in the time of the new covenant. And they were in that time because the old covenant was fading away and the new covenant was coming in. The same is regarding doing works, having a works-based um, system like the Roman Catholic Church uh, had. Paul tells us in Ephesians 2, the very well-known part where he says in Ephesians 2, verse um, 8 to 10, for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For he, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So I want to stress not of works. So even though the Roman Catholic Church didn't actually turn back to the law of Moses per se, they still did try 
to gain perfection by works. And this goes on to say that if we if we accept this gift of God, then these we will do works, but our works will follow us. In other words, through the faith, works will happen. We do not go and do works um, to be saved. Lastly, I just want to look at Romans 10, which actually speaks of the two forms of righteousness. Um, you can read the whole chapter by yourself. I've just highlighted um, three parts that I'd like to look at. Um, basically, what it says there is Israel of old did not submit to the righteousness of God. Now, he says, therefore, Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law. The man who does these things shall live by them. And then it speaks of the righteousness of faith. So I don't want to go into the details. I just want to point out that there was the righteousness of law, whereby um, in the old covenant, the Lord set up a system, um, but that was because of the disobedience and transgressions of Israel. He set up a system of righteousness by the law. The thing is, you have to do the law in order to have that righteousness. And the problem is the flesh is weak to do those things. So the new covenant that Jesus brought is the righteousness of faith. And that is the system that superseded the old covenant system. So in both cases, when they were under the law, they didn't do the law. They did not submit to the righteousness of God. And when the new covenant came, they still um, did not submit to the righteousness that God had brought to them. They wanted to go back to the law, which they couldn't keep in any case. And now in our day, we see with Christian Zionism this same thing of rejecting the righteousness of uh, faith of the new covenant in exchange to go back under the law of Moses. Now, the people make their own form of righteousness um, by deciding which laws to keep. But we, we cannot have a righteousness of our own. We must submit to the righteousness of God. Um, and then it says, therefore, Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. So these are quite simple things, but it's often when we get to the nitty gritty and the very basic simple things that we actually have the um, instruments to protect us against weapons, spiritual weapons of deception. It's when we understand how things work and the schemes that are set up against us that we actually start to um, really understand what the scriptures are telling us. That is why on my channel I stress so much uh, the, the um, deception of falling back to works of the law because it's one of the basic, basic ways which false prophets deceive you. And it is the two basic milk doctrines being faith and repentance of dead works um, that we need to know in order not to be deceived. And we cannot move on to maturity until we really understand this. Also, if we do not understand that false prophets use um, works of the law and turning back to the law and setting up earthly kingdoms as their ways to um, deceive us, then we can so easily fall for deception. But if we know these two basic things, then it is very easy to see the deception.